Hi folks, welcome to the first Wednesday widget in the new shop. We've got the Tormach 440. We've got a one inch by one inch by two inch block of aluminum. And we've got a broken plastic part off a sailboat. Let's make a new one. Welcome to another Wednesday widget, folks. There's four things we gotta do to make this part. There's the CAD, the CAM, the fixed strain, and then the actual machining. The machining, like we're seeing here, is actually pretty easy, and so is the CAM. It's the CAD that's pretty tricky, and the fixed strain that requires some ingenuity and a question of what works best. The CAD we're gonna cover in this Friday's Fusion Friday, and I was pretty, pretty happy with it. This was a new, uh, thing for me because this part has um, a complex shape which we ended up using the loft command to do because you can't just extrude it given the nature of that shape. So again it took some playing. The other really cool thing was we didn't have uh, the nature of that part is it's not quite as easy to use something like a set of calipers to measure and we also have a major piece of it broken off. So we did a really cool trick with importing a, a photo of the part into Fusion 360 and calibrating it, I think, pretty darn accurately. So we'll see how it turns out. Um, but sit back, relax, and enjoy some uh, machining footage here, folks. Folks, we are running a T-Blaster campaign. You can help support our channel and buy a pretty cool Saunders Machine Works t-shirt over at T-Blaster, link here and in the video description. We appreciate the support.
The last thing I want to check before we take it out of the vise and lose our original setup position, I want to check this interior pocket dimension. It should be 0.43 inches. I went to use my gauge blocks and they're too big. It's actually just that inside radius that makes it um, the, the, such that they won't fit. So that was a bummer, but then I realized, well, wait a minute here, we've got a set of gauge pins. So I grabbed a gauge pin and that's a 428. So this is a little loose. That means it would be two thou under. This is a 429 and it fits, but it is actually it fits pretty well. Just, just, and it's got a hair of wobble on it. So if you believe that that's, see, it comes out a little hard though. So if you believe that that's on, that means we're off by 1000 on this. Now this is a clearance pocket anyways, effectively the way we're designing this. And so the question is, well, wait a minute here. Why are we off a thou? We can do better than that. And I wouldn't get too worked up about it. First off, we, mostly because the tool tolerance on most end mills is plus or minus two tenths. And so if you assume, and that's an assumption, that the end mill was undersized, that's two tenths on each wall. And that adds up to a pretty good amount just right there. That would be eight tenths. That could be explaining it. Um, and in, and of, we could also adjust in our tool paths if we needed to make this perfect. The problem is that because we don't have the perfect interior pocket dimension, the way the plastic sample we were given broke, we're going to machine this 10 thou over what I think it is, and we're just going to put a set screw here in the end. should work just fine. Don't worry about this looking like junk. We're going to fix all that here in uh, the next part. Last thing we're going to do, flex arm. When we fixture this, we're going to use a 1032 screw into that very small blind hole in there. And I, this is where I love using the flex arm. I don't want to do this in the machine. A little bit of cutting fluid, 